Oh yeah. Need this. Um yep, one of those will work. Uh eh, you never know. Alright, see so, uh sure. And, uh, yep. No. Alright, see so ratchet. Yep. Alright, now for sockets. One of those will be good. Probably one of those and one of those. Um yeah, I think we're just gonna, I think we're just gonna need all of that. Sure, why not? Now it's time to get some coffee. All right, Kirk, you crazy bastard. What are you up to this time? Since I've started working full time, this is really hard to do. So I kind of just have to like, every day I have off, do these projects. But uh, since I've acquired the new Mustang, uh, the, the Fox body, I have big plans for it. You already know what I'm doing with it. So I'm going to do a two, three turbo build, five speed swap or you know, whatever. And um, it's gonna be a fun little car. Here's the problem with when you do those things, I have a couple options. I thought about, and I may still do this, thought about doing a standalone ECU. I was really thinking something from Mega Squirt. They have some really nice affordable standalone units. Um, that uh, really doesn't break the bank. They got the, what the, the mini, the mini one that does exactly everything I'm going to need to do. It will support the amount of horsepower I'm looking to make. And uh, it's only like 350 bucks or something like that. It's crazy. But before I decide to do that, just to have a little fun and to see if I can make it work until then, I decided to do an ECU swap. Now, see, something I haven't mentioned in any of my videos is what I use to tune my Cobra. Now I have, and you may have seen this, but I have the Delta Forces Sniper, and it's not, not anything from Holly. It's a little load box, and those who know, know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just basically a device to transfer the tune from the software to the car and program it. It's a very, very simple device to use. It's a really nice tool, it's a really nice piece to easily tune your vehicle. I use it to, to you know, um, adjust things on the Cobra and while I still haven't kind of had time to write in something nice for the Cobra definitely runs a lot better than what I had from uh, my X4 and uh, the Bama tuners over at American Muscle. And it's not to say that they wrote a bad tune it's just they're very conservative and well it's so they don't blow people's cars up I completely understand that but I definitely wanted more than what they were willing to give uh, especially since I have plans in the future for the Cobra um, and, and potentially forced induction, regardless of the fact I did want to eventually do a full E85 conversion on the Cobra. And since that software allows um, the tuning for E85, it was perfect. That's why I got it. But the reason why I mentioned that is because it will only work on an OBD2 car. If you all, I mean, it's pretty obvious that the uh, Fox body is not an OBD2 car, but not to worry, we can easily make it an OBD2 car. Now, I've researched the, comp the list of compatible ECUs that my tuner will uh, integrate with, and I bulleted it down to one gear of one model from Ford. And it's the only thing that's gonna work with a 2.3 and the hardware that's already in the Mustang. So, I need to find a ECM out of a 97 Ranger. The important part is that it's gotta be a 2.3. It's gotta be a 2.3 Ranger, and, in, and really 97's the only year I have um, to get all the stuff I want where it's gonna be pretty much a, an easy swap. The biggest difference between what is referred to as the EEC-4, which is what's in the Fox body, and the EEC-5 is the pin count, but generally it's the same, like half the pins aren't even used. It's because in certain models, 
those pins might be used, but in the applications like the Ranger, pretty much half the pins aren't even used. So it's the same pins. They're just probably in different, uh, they're probably in different spots on the connector. So I have to repin it, but they're the same pins as what you would find and same sensors, which you would find already on the Fox body. So theoretically it should be, you know, just repin the connector, plug and play. And then I can write up a tune using my software, load it, and I should have a running OBD2 Fox body Mustang and when, that'd be great. So, cause then that allows me to easily data log, that allows me easily to flash tunes and it's a more modern uh, ECM, which allows better tuning ability. And I'm not breaking the bank because I already have the tuning device. All I need is the ECU. So that's what I'm gonna be going to do today. Mm. Mm -mm. Yep, I needed that. Coincidence that crack, cocaine and coffee start with a C? I think not. So yeah, I'm venturing off to another junkyard today. Uh, so LKQ, they have bought up, so there was a chain of local uh, scrap yards around here, or salvage yards, whatever, junkyards, however you want to refer to them. There were there were a, a chain of them around here, they're called Crazy Rays, you know? So anyone in the Baltimore area knows about Crazy Rays. And uh, so that's what we always refer to them as, but uh, you know, big corporate company, LKQ, came and bought them out, all the small, these small yards and stuff, and they all converted them over. But honestly, they're a lot better now because you can see the inventory online before you go. You don't have to waste your $2 that it is now just to figure out the car you're looking for it isn't even there. And you can check prices before you go too. But they've made it a lot more convenient, and honestly, it's, it's a much better experience than it used to be. Um, but the, the Crazy Ray's name is still pretty funny and everything. Anywho, I'm off to one of the original Crazy Rays um, that's on LKQ that's a little bit further away than I usually go. So like in Maryland, there's like about five different LKQ yards. So we're going to one of the more further away ones. I don't normally travel, but sadly, it's the only yard with a 9723 Ranger. I think it's a 23. It doesn't, that's the only thing. It doesn't mention what engine's in it. Um, it does say two-wheel drive, and there's no pictures of under the hood, but I'm hoping that it is a 2-3 uh, vehicle, so it should be pretty easy. The nice thing is, on the Rangers, much like the, the Fox body, it must have been just something with the 2-3 the way they did it, is they mounted the EC... I keep referring to it as ECM or ECU, I guess either is correct, but I always I like saying ECU. It rolls off the tongue better. They mount the ECU in the engine compartment. So it's pretty easy to get to both on the Ranger. It's on the same side, the passenger side of the engine, but it's on the firewall where on the Fox body, it's kind of like just mounted out in the open towards the passenger side strut tower. So yeah, I'm gonna head over there. Yeah, I don't know, it's about 40 minutes away. What is it? 40, 48 miles up towards Frederick, Maryland. Um, so nice drive out that way. I always love going out there. So it's nice, get away from the hustle and bustle of the, you know, suburbs here and go out into more royal land. So rural, rural, that you just, who comes up with these words? there for the Ranger but I'm just gonna walk around anyway if I find anything cool I'll pull the camera out and uh, we'll talk about it forgot my GoPro in the car but this is a sad find we all know what this was let's pluck the badge or get off of it it actually uh We've got some nice parts on it still. It's got headers, man. That's worth picking off. I mean, assuming you have one of these. Yeah, it's kind of sad to see this in here. They are you. I'm not sure why. I didn't even take half the good stuff off of it either. Oddly enough, 
and then another one bites the dust. All right, success. Got her Ranger computer here and the end of the harness um, just for the connector. Something I realized very quickly and I wish I had just taken the extra time. If I had just pulled the entire uh, harness off, it would have been plug and play and I wouldn't have to reconnect everything. Um, but <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. I got schematics for both cars. Um, so it's just a matter of lining up the, matching the different wires. So not super big deal. Uh, honestly, the t it would have been the same amount of time that what's going to take me to would pull the whole harness off the Ranger, then it would have um, just splicing all this together to what I already have. Because uh, a lot of it was the same. Honestly, it would have been plug and freaking play know that going forward uh but it's fine uh when i go and do the you know actual build and i want to make everything nice you know i clean up a lot of the wires and whatnot and see if i can tuck in some stuff this is something i want to try i've never done it i'm always about trying new things i'm always about doing things that hasn't been done not to say this hasn't been done i'm sure it's even been done in exact application but for me never done it never seen anyone do it so it's just gonna be a cool little project on top of everything else I have going on like now I want to definitely see if there's any improvements over the factory ECU and tuning and then this ECU with just a very mild like base tune like 90 I don't even want to see it I don't I won't change fuel trims I won't change timing any of that I'll just leave everything as it's supposed to be um, for the Ranger and see if there's any difference. So it's gonna be pretty cool. I like to see the difference and uh, Since I brought that up if you do continue to watch my videos and if you have been watching my videos and This is all gonna be a fun series with this car because since it's kind of I'm not planning to keep it the way it is I don't mind beating on it and Potentially destroying the drivetrain because it's all gonna be li literally Everything's gonna be replaced the rear end's gonna gonna get switched for an 80 it's gonna get a new drive shaft, aluminum. It's gonna get a T5 trans, and it's gonna get a, a Turbo 2.3 bottom end. So it's a lot of stuff's going to change. Just gonna kind of have fun with what I got. I'm gonna do a series of videos doing different things on testing small things, see if it makes any difference. Now I don't have access to a dyno, but I do have access to a draggy and some roads that I can do zero to 60 tests. Obviously it's not the most scientific test, but if there is improvement with acceleration of the vehicle, then generally that means there's an improvement in power somewhere. So uh, I'm gonna do some tests, and one of the tests, of course, will be with this ECU, and that would be kind of fun, so. I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to uh, get to this. This project's actually not gonna be bad because I can do it indoors. It's pretty much gonna be a, a swap, a plug and play thing once I get the harnesses matched up. But once I do that, it shouldn't be insanely hard to, to put together. So this is something I can definitely do on my downtime after work, go in the garage, do a little bit of wiring each night, and it shouldn't be an issue. I don't have to worry about having to work in the dark or work in the, you know, outside in the cold. So this will definitely be a nice project to do over the week and something I want to continue to do in the future. So of course, if you're interested in this project, you know what to do. Please, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and if you wanna see more content like this, then go ahead, subscribe to the channel, and keep a lookout for the next video.